Uh, my name is Rex Dupain and I take photographs for a living. Well, he was my father and uh, he was a photographer also. He grew up um, in Ashfield, which was more of a r rural setting in some ways back then. Um, but he actually, his house was in Castle Crag on the water. Working with architects was basically his bread and butter money. He did a lot of portraits in the 30s and 40s, and then he moved into the 50s, 60s and 70s doing more architectural work because he preferred to work with buildings as opposed to people. This particular collection of works that's coming up for auction, it's very comprehensive in terms of a man's lifelong works. You know, it starts with very pictorial images, it moves in through some industrial images, but it, it, it has a modernist ending to it. And because of its historical content, that's terribly interesting as well. With those early photographs, the, the Casino influence, I mean, some of those almost pastoral shots are like David Davies or Casino or that particular period. It's a very pictorial period. And I guess that became exhausted. You know, it was sort of been there, done that. And bit embracing the modernist era was almost like um, T.S. Eliot's poetry. It had that lack of um, sentimentality. It was fairly raw, simple, and, and fairly straightforward, a straight photograph untampered with. He was more concerned with the aesthetics, with the actual object itself, how light played on it, textures, and trying to get inanimate objects to be animate. Having gone to art school, he would have understood what surrealism was about, and Man Ray was his greatest inspiration then. And of course, there weren't too many Man Ray shots, but there were sort of there were magazines, and most artists, whether you're a photographer or a painter in those days, because we didn't have masterpieces in Australia, and it was a bit of a cultural vacuum. They they got it through literature. But he was an Englishman called Hal Salvage, and he was just on a camping trip with my father way back then. This was a again a spontaneous pose that he noticed. It's a very sculptural form and it's very much like Ayers Rock, you know, it's a very solid icon of Australia and it's about, you know, the sun and it's about lifestyle and it's, it has that sculptural simplicity that he liked as part of the modernist era. He liked things very simple. There was two, two images that he took of the Sunbaker. As you notice, it's got a curved, it's got a hand that's quite relaxed out here. The original one he chose was, a, was, a, was curved in like that which he thought was more embryonic, but he lost the negative. And this was the one that survived, which is plainly the better of the images. Well, I think both the bridge and the opera house were an iconic moment for everybody. And he was interested in recording the process from beginning to end. I think he said once with the opera house that if it was ever blown up, which is interesting from today's point of view, he could be rebuilt from his photographs because he was so thorough. His evolution from pictorialism to modernism, he had, you know, certain artists have convictions and they've got certain standards and certain ways of seeing the world and, and they stick to those. It's almost like a manifesto of what they believe in. You're out there and you do it and you produce these works and if the world responds to them, that's terrific. And in fact, with his world, they did.